So you just got recruited to be a broadcast engineer. Maybe you're the IT guy. Maybe you are a board op or a DJ or a production guy or somebody who just really knows computers or you know, people think you're smart. You probably are, you probably really are smart. But broadcast is a little bit different. And so I'm gonna help you get quickly started in this quick start for broadcast engineers. There are three things you're going to be responsible for, and that is going to be compliance, technical maintenance, and customer support. With compliance, your job is basically going to be keeping the station legal from a technical standpoint. Now, that means maintaining station operating logs, that means maintaining equipment maintenance, so that way it is legal to operate. For example, uh, like your transmission equipment, transmitters, STLs, things like that. You need to know that the occupied bandwidth, that when you are transmitting, you are within your occupied bandwidth. You need to make sure you have proper power levels. Too many times has this bit broadcasters where, well, you know, I wanna get out more and so they crank the power up or they don't even realize that something has changed and the power levels have increased. So you have to make sure that as the broadcast engineer, that you are transmitting with the correct power. Now, with that, you can find you, those power levels on your broadcast license. They will be listed there. TPO, transmitter power output, is how much power should be coming out of that transmitter going into that antenna. If you don't have a copy of the license, well, there should be one posted at the control point, but with the changes in the main studio rule and all that fun stuff, you can go onto the FCC's website. Just do a Google search, FCC FM query. That will take you to the FCC's website. Put in your call sign. You know, it's WXYZ or KLBZ. Whatever the call sign is, hit enter, and that will bring up the station license information for you on the FCC's website. From there, you can download a PDF copy of it for your records, and that is what you need to be making sure that the station operates and abides by. You need to make sure that you are using the correct antenna. So if an antenna is specified in your license, there may have been changes, there may have been repairs, there may have been whatever. Things happen but making sure that the license reflects what is actually happening and making sure that your equipment reflects what the license says it should. Make sense? Your license and what you're doing should match. Uh, making sure your modulation is within limits. Uh, for FM stations, making sure you're not over-modulating. For AM stations, making sure you're not over-modulating as well. For AM stations, you can go up to 125% positive peaks and 100% negative peaks. Typically your broadcast processor, audio processor will handle that, but making sure that that's adjusted to the point where you will not be over modulating. And same with your FM broadcast, you should not be over modulating 100% with that. Um, making sure your emergency alert system is ready, operational, uh, is tested, making sure that you are abiding by the local plans and what your station management wants to do. There are some basic minimum things you have to do. Weekly EAS tests, uh, forwarding the monthly EAS test. Beyond that, oh, and forwarding national periodic test and forwarding emergency action notifications. Beyond that, everything else is voluntary. Do I recommend doing it? Yes but again, it's up to station management if they want to. And finally, as far as compliance goes, making sure your station is on the air. Is it on the air? Because if the station is not on the air, after a certain amount of time, you need to notify the FCC and then get a special temporary authority to be off the air. It happens, I get it. A storm comes through, knocks out the power, or uh, in the case of a station that I know, that I know really well, that they had excessive snow and could not access the site. 
and so the station went off the air for a while. So because it was more than a certain amount of time, the FCC had to be notified and a special temporary authority had to be given from the FCC to allow them to continue to operate that way. So making sure your station is on the air. The second part is technical maintenance. That is maintaining the equipment operationally. Uh, this is probably what you're going to be spending the most amount of your time doing. Uh, cleaning out filters on transmitters, making sure dust, is, you know, the environment is as dust free as you can make it. It's within the right temperature or the right humidity, air conditioning maintenance, things like that. Equipment today is really reliable but it still does require routine maintenance. And you can find that in the transmitter manual. It will tell you everything you need to do to maintain that transmitter operationally. So find the manual. If you don't have access to the manual, you can't find a printed version of it, go to the manufacturer's website. They will probably have it available as a PDF for you to download. Give it a read through. Don't You don't have to read through every single word but at least skim through it, understand where to find certain things, and that will help you down the road in the future if you ever have to go into a troubleshooting mode, because there are parts where the manual will talk about certain things, and you'll be like, oh yeah, that's right, I remember, and you know where in the manual to go to find that information. Um, sometimes weather happens, you know, we just, well, as I'm recording this, just this past couple of months, Southern California has had enormous amounts of snow, more snow than it has ever had in a very long time. And so because of that, uh, you have to keep an eye on your equipment a little bit more. Are your air conditioning vents getting covered with snow? Can you dig those out? Uh, can you get into the site? Airflow is important. Temperature is important. Um, humidity is important. Just making sure that everything is within the right parameters for your equipment. Now, temp sometimes towers ice up and that ice will fall. It will hit things, it will damage equipment. So again, now you have to make sure that you maintain and repair what was damaged, whether it's a fence, whether it's a, a feed line, whether it's another antenna of yours, below whatever the ice fell down. So you might not necessarily be able to fix everything. If you are not comfortable climbing a tower, do not climb a tower. I'm gonna say that again. If you are not comfortable climbing a tower, if you don't have experience climbing a tower, do not climb a tower. Leave it to people who do that type of things. Me? I don't climb towers. So what do I do? I don't climb towers. For your safety, for the safety of others, for the safety of those who have to come rescue you. Please don't do things that you are not comfortable with doing. Same goes with electricity, high voltage. If you don't know what not to touch, don't touch anything. Get help. Get an electrician to help help you safe circuits. Uh, turn off breakers. Get yourself one of those lockout tagout kits. Um, if there's going to be more than one person on site, use a lockout tagout kit so that way you don't get electrocuted. So again, we'll, weather, fires, uh, you know, acts of vandalism. You will be required to fix things and get your station back up on the air. Um, Sometimes things in the studios need changes. Ads move changes. Um, you know, that's where the other part of being a broadcast engineer comes in. You know, the next day a producer will come in and say, hey, I need 15 mics. Okay, that's crazy. I need five mics in this four microphone studio. Okay, so being able to accommodate that for them, reasonable accommodations, of course, and um, you know, that's gonna be part of the maintenance side of things. Um, and today there's a lot of computer-based maintenance. I mean, there's software updates that need to be run. There's fixing printers. There's upgrading operating systems. Thanks, Windows. 
Um, you know, there's configuring network switches. All these things are part of the technical maintenance that you will be needing to do. Finally, the last part is customer support. And I feel this is probably one of the most important parts of, well, I guess these are all equally important, but customer support uh, is important. And for you, your customers are the DJs, the producers, the management, the people who rely on you for making sure the equipment works. So you are the logistics aspect. Now, if you know anything about incident command system, you are the logistics side of the ICS system. So you're there to make sure everything works, to make sure things are available for the on-air people, for the operations people to be able to do their jobs. But uh, you know, you're going to be working with other staff at the station. Some of them are going to be people that you get along with great. Others are gonna be people you do not get along with at all. For some reason, they have it out for you. They hate you. Okay, but you still have to support them. You still have to help them. Um, and being fair to everybody, you know, making sure that you can get to all their all their requests. And the last part of that is patience. Patience is huge. Um, I have learned to have more patience as I get older. Uh, but again, patience, learning patience is huge. Not just in the technical side of things, but in the customer support side of things. Finally, the last, last part of that is going to be documentation, take notes, keep track of things. Uh, if you have a ticketing system, use it. Um, I love a ticketing system because it lets me keep track of notes. As I go through troubleshooting, whatever this situation is, I can go back and look, oh no, I did try that. Oh, I didn't try that. What happened when I tried this? Um, and it helps me if I have to escalate to vendor support or manufacturer support and getting them to help with uh, something that's not working right. And if that situation happens again, I can reference that ticket again and go, how did I fix that again? Oh, right, it was this, 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 this. So having a ticketing system, having documentation of some sort is very, very important. And the last thing I'm gonna say about getting you started, you don't know everything, I don't know everything, not everybody knows everything. And it's okay. It's okay to ask for help. It really is. Um, don't be too proud. Don't be too proud to ask for help because failing to do so will result in equipment damage, uh, somebody getting injured, or somebody getting killed. Yes, it can be that serious. So don't be too proud. Ask for help. And network in the engineering community. Yes, you're kind of networking here, and some of you comment on the videos, and, and I really appreciate that, and I try to respond the best I can. Um, but get connected with your local society of broadcast engineers. You don't have to volunteer to be on the board. You don't have to go to every meeting, but start getting to know the community, and they will be very willing to help you and answer questions, and you may find someone who'd be willing to kind of mentor you like I did. I found a few people to mentor me and help me in my broadcast engineering growth. Um, ask questions as, as much as you can. Why does this do this? How does this work? You know, why would we do this? Because that will help you learn. And finally, like I said, join the Professional Society of Broadcast Engineers, the Society of Broadcast Engineers. Through them, they have an enormous amount of information available webinars, um, trainings, they have the local chapters. So get connected because that will be your support system. And so, uh, yeah. So this is just a really quick start to help you get started in broadcast engineering. No matter what your background is, this is gonna help you get started and get running in this industry. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational. If you enjoyed this video, watch some more in this broadcast basic series that I'm producing. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. See you in the next video.